Hey guys, AB here from B&H, and today we're looking at Rode's new Rodecaster Pro, a feature-packed podcasting unit that makes the process of creating your podcasts easy and painless. And since podcasting is the fastest growing media category to date, the Rodecaster Pro's arrival is definitely a timely one. Now, let's leave the specs and boring stats for later and talk about utility. I think that one of the most important takeaways is that the Rodecaster Pro is a standalone unit. And that's key because it means that you don't have to buy a whole bunch of other gear just to get your podcasts going. In fact, my voice is being recorded straight into the unit to a micro SD card. So yes, you can even create content without a computer, which is very convenient. I know that this next bit of information is obvious, but an additional piece of gear you will need, if you don't already own one, is a microphone. Preferably a good dynamic mic or a condenser mic, like this Rode NT1. You can pretty much use any brand or model mic you prefer because the Rodecaster has general settings for both condenser and dynamic mics. Also, not surprisingly, there are specific algorithms for popular Rode mics like the PodMic, Procaster, Broadcaster, NT1, and so on. So, how easy is it to get set up? Well, on the back of the unit, there are four high quality Class A mic pre's with XLR inputs. So you just plug your mic into your input of choice and you're ready to tweak your setup in the menu system. This process is really easy because the inputs on the back correspond to the first four faders on the top panel. So since I'm plugged into mic input one, I simply press the blue number one button above the first fader and I immediately enter a page with options for that channel setup. I chose Rode NT1, which again is the model I'm using. Then I move to the next screen, which is called setup. Here you'll see level control buttons, phantom power for condenser mics, and an advanced button for more involved features like dynamic and EQ options, and so forth. So if I want to utilize a compressor, de gate, high-pass filter, or ducking, I'd make those selections here. Ducking, by the way, is a very useful feature, as it turns down other audio sources when the host speaks, allowing the host to always be heard even when everyone else is speaking simultaneously. One final feature to note in this section is the inclusion of Aphex's popular Aural Exciter and Big Bottom processors, which allow for some nice voice shaping options like this. All right, let's test the Aural Exciter. One, two, three, four. 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 Yep, there's definitely more top end when we turn on the Aural Exciter. Nice. Now let's try the Big Bottom. Hello, 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 hello. Wow. Yeah, instant low end, um, you know, a little bit boomier, definitely fattens out the voice. And as we talk and remove it, we can see that now we're back to a, a less bassy uh, piece of audio. Very cool. Once we exit the setup screen, we have the final option of voice, which is simply a collection of voice tones and strengths that you can try to match your voice to. Obviously, you should go with whichever combination you feel sounds best for you. Now, let's talk about headphone monitoring which Rode has made very convenient and flexible. Since there are four mic inputs, the Rodecaster Pro naturally features four high-powered headphone outputs, each with individual volume control to allow each guest to monitor audio comfortably during the recording of the podcast. To demonstrate the effectiveness of independent volume control, I have brought my friend and colleague, Phil, from the Pro Audio Writing Team. Phil, what's going on? Just chilling, AB. How you doing? <laughs> I'm good, I'm good. I know you're a pro audio writer, but why don't you tell the people what else you do or have done in your illustrious career? Well, outside of b and I have spent a lot of time teaching uh, audio operations uh, for you know software and hardware, plus mixing and recording for independent artists uh, and sign artists too. Very sweet. That's what I'm talking about. Well, obviously, Phil is qualified to help me with this very simple task. So what we're going to do is just simply check whether or not you can hear yourself. <laughs> How's the level right now? I mean, it might be good for you but it's not good for me. Oh, that's not good. Well, that's kind of what I wanted to hear because that allows me to do something. Uh, more. <laughs> I'm gonna raise this number two knob since it corresponds to your mic going into input two, and is that getting any better? That's perfect right there, yeah. That's what I'm talking about. Well, thank you for helping me with that very simple demonstration, and uh, I really appreciate your time. Well, thank you. By the way, the master headphone operator, this guy, also has access to all the functions on the Rodecaster, so levels and other parameters can be checked without disturbing the headphone mix of additional podcasters. There's even a convenient 8th inch headphone jack located on the front for the person operating the unit. On to something a little different. Wouldn't it be nice if you could easily make and take phone calls during your podcast should you need that capability? Well, you can with a Rodecaster Pro. 
and this can be executed in a couple ways. You could certainly use the 8th inch TRRS connection on the back to connect a smartphone, but the more versatile way would be to connect your phone, tablet, or computer via Bluetooth to the Rodecaster Pro, which will then integrate any call you receive into your podcast. In fact, I'm going to have my friend and colleague Matt call me now via FaceTime audio to demonstrate this process. Here we go. Ah, here we go. Hello. Hello. Hey. What's up, Matt? Hey, man. <laughs> wow, I'm surprised that it sounds clear. I mean, you sound uh, you sound like you're just on a regular phone call. It's pretty cool. Sounds good to me. Yeah, you're coming in clear. Nice, nice. What did you did you use FaceTime audio for this call? Yeah, I just gave you gave you a call on the iPhone via FaceTime audio. Okay. Yeah, it sounds good. Yeah, sounds 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 pretty clear. Um. Cool. I, I know you're busy, so just thanks again for taking time to help me test out the the Bluetooth phone capability of the Rodecaster. I appreciate it. Yeah, no problem, no problem. That was pretty simple. Now, don't forget, you can also use the Bluetooth connection as a way to simply stream audio from a compatible Bluetooth device. A quick overview of the rest of the top panel reveals faders that control levels of the USB input, the 8th inch input, the Bluetooth input, and a fader that controls the overall volume of the eight multicolored pads to the right. These pads allow you to trigger sound effects, jingles, backing tracks, or any other audio you'd like. You can either drag and drop sounds from your computer, or record straight to a pad via the mic you have plugged in, essentially giving you the ability to record something on the fly. Check it out. Hey, testing, one, two, three. Hey, testing, one, two, three. Rounding out the rest of the physical features on top of the Rodecaster are a knob for controlling the two dedicated quarter-inch outputs, which could be used to either feed a pair of speakers or connect to a PA system. Of course, there's the all-important record button for instant recording to your micro SD card, and last, but certainly not least, the large color touchscreen for access to settings, presets, metering, and other parameters in the menu system. So here's a quick recap of the features that make the Rodecaster Pro a powerful solution for podcasters. It has four broadcast quality XLR mic inputs with available phantom power. It can handle phone calls. There are eight programmable pads for instant sound effects, eight faders to control audio levels, four headphone outputs with individual controls for the host and guests, AFX processing for rich and warm voice textures, Bluetooth and cable connectivity, onboard recording, and USB connectivity that allows the Rodecaster to function as an audio interface for streaming, recording, and other applications. Well, that's it for the video, so thanks for watching. If you'd like more info on the Rodecaster, check out bhphoto.com, and don't forget to subscribe. This is AB, and I'll see you next time.